spider? Now that's a non-poisonous one. Oh. Yeah. Some spiders are poisonous, so you do have to be careful. Have you ever seen a hammock web? No. They're flat ones like that. It's more like a mesh. They're not in regular patterns like this. They're in a sort of mesh, but they're very different from those. Let's go and have a look and see if we can see one. The spider's web is its home and its hunting ground. Look, there's a hammock web. See, it's hung like a hammock between those plants. And a spider is underneath. Oh, look, there's another web. Oh, yeah, that's another orb web. The webs look really delicate, don't they? But in fact, they're really very strong. Oh, more webs. Oh, look, here's another spider. Another non-poisonous one. Can I catch this one? Okay, but be careful, don't hurt it. Gotcha. Hurry, put the lid on. Got him? Yeah, I got him. We'll have to catch some flies for him, won't we? Yeah. He was so fast, I almost missed him. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, he's doing fine. Uh, have we got a book at home that we could read about him? I'm sure we do. I want to catch a lot more spiders, too. OK. We may have to go out looking at different times, because some spiders come out only in the morning, and some spiders come out only at night. And some are more active in certain seasons. Some come out in the winter, and some are around only in the summer. Hi, Paul. Hello. You OK? Put your bag down there. Look what we've got. What's in there? Spider. A spider. Let's take your coat off. Look, it's down here. OK. Oh, there. Where'd you catch it? Um, we were out walking. We were gonna watch it make a web. They make, you know, those sort of octagonal webs. Yeah. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. Right. And it's got eight eyes, right? It's got six or eight eyes and a two-part body. First, there's its head and thorax, then its abdomen. So it's got two parts to it, and an insect's got three. How do they make their webs? First of all, they've got to spin what is called a bridge line, right? So they spin from one point to another. So the spider attaches some silk there, moves across to another point, dragging the silk behind it. The silk actually comes out from the tip of its abdomen, from the spinnerets. Oh. Now, from there, it spins another piece of silk and it loops it from there to there. So we've got the bridge line and the sagging line there. Now from this one, it drops down and spins a line and pulls it tight. Oh. And the point of the V is the center of the web. Oh, I see, I see. So that makes its frame? Right. Then it's got to complete the frame. So it moves around from point to point, making the frame. And when it's made that nice frame, it goes back to the V point here, the center of the web, and it makes a temporary spiral. Is that so it can walk around? That's right. And as it builds its web, the spider measures the distances with its legs. With its legs? Yes. It uses its legs as a ruler. Oh, I see. So the bigger the spider, the bigger the web? Right. And after the frame is finished, it goes back and spins a different silk, a sticky silk. Oh. Is that for catching their food? Right. That's the silk that's going to trap the insects. Oh, wow. And as it completes its web using the sticky silk, it eats the temporary spiral it made before. So the web's an octagon shape. Yeah, sort of. And its shape is made up of all those spirals connected together. And you know that a spider knows how to build a web without ever being taught? Wow, when you see a spider hanging on a web, is it stuck there? Oh, uh, no, because the spider, in fact, has got little tiny hooks on its legs. And when you see a spider hanging upside down, it's actually hooked onto the web. Uh, how do they wrap their food up with the web? Well, you see, the spider is in the middle of the web, hanging upside down, like this, waiting for its prey. And as soon as it feels a vibration on any of those threads, 
it rushes out really quickly. Of course, the insect is already trapped on the sticky silk, but the spider then spins more silk very quickly from its spinnerets and wraps the insect up like a package. Oh, so it can't escape. Right, so it can't escape. The spider wraps the insect up in the silk and then it bites it and poisons it. Sometimes it eats the insect right away, but often it leaves it in the web for later. There must be something wrong with this one because it doesn't do much. Well, it's already spun a little bit of the web. You know, spiders do different things at different times of day. We'll see what he's done by tomorrow. Chris, Paul. What? Come and have a look. We're coming. We're coming. Come and see these house spiders. Where? Look over there. They're huge. That's a female over there. Now this one is the male house spider. Hmm. A way you can tell is to look at those things at the front. The palps. What? What? Those two things there. They look sort of like it's wearing little boxing gloves. Oh, yeah. That means it's a male. The female also has palps, but hers are much thinner. How did they get into the bathtub? Did they come through the drain? No, they've fallen into the tub. They were probably walking on the edge and slipped in. And once they've slipped in, they can't get out because the sides are too smooth. What do you think they were doing? Hunting, maybe? Yeah, sometimes they're hunting, looking for flies, looking for food. And sometimes they're looking for a mate. Hey, these look like the ones we've seen down in the basement. Do they? Yeah, they look like the same kind. Well, they probably are. Can we go down there? I think it's over here. Yeah, there he is. That spider, I'm pretty sure is dead. Either that or it's the skin, because when a spider grows big, it sheds its skin. Well, I didn't know that. Here's one that's not dead. You know, these webs are really strong. Every time the spider runs across it, it, it leaves another thread, so the web gets stronger and stronger. See, if I pull it, it doesn't break. Yeah. They're called cobwebs, or sheet webs. There's a good web there by the floor. Where? Where? There. It's like a little tunnel. It is a tunnel. Can you see the spider? It's waiting for an insect to come by. Yeah, will we see ones like this when we go out looking? No, because these are house spiders, so oh, we won't yeah. find them outside. Anyway, we better get going, oh, yeah. see oh, what we yeah. can find. Okay. All right. Come on then, let's go. Found one. Right there. See, it's a jumping spider. Where? Up there, can you see him? Look at all those eyes. Now see, this spider has eight separate eyes. It hasn't any compound eyes like insects have. Look, Could part of his web. No, that's not its web. A jumping spider doesn't build one. That's a strand of silk they use as a safety line. Oh. So if they fall, a bit like a mountain climber, yeah. they've got something to hold on to. How do they <clears> catch their prey? No, they don't use a web. They just watch for an insect to come by, and they jump. As soon as they capture their food, they eat it right away. Without a web, they don't store food like other spiders. Okay, should we try and catch this one? Have you got a jar? Yeah, I got one somewhere. Quick. Got, got it. Let's have a look. <laughs> Enormous eyes. Come on, let's see what else we can find. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful web. Look, see, it's a garden spider. It's a big spider. See its large abdomen and the stripes on its legs? It's got little zigzags. See the web slightly on an angle? Uh-huh. Well, I suppose it makes it better for any flies to get caught in it. Now, do you see that the spider's sitting right in the middle of the web? Yeah. yeah. Well, as soon as it feels any vibration, it will run out along a dry thread. Oh, yeah. Do you remember oh, we right. talked about the hey, sticky ones? Hey, a bee ones? just went in. <gasps> You're right. He'll never get away. Oh, look at that spider go after it. Do you see how quick he was? 
Look, it's already starting to wrap the bee. Yeah. It's putting its web stuff around it. Right. It won't eat the bee now. We'll keep it for later? Right. They're very, very sensible spiders. Anyway, we'll leave that one. Okay. We'll let it have its dinner. Come on. Fall is a good time to look for spiders. They mate in the fall, and in cold climates, they hibernate all winter. Then they lay their eggs in the spring, and the eggs hatch out as the weather gets warmer. How long does it take the eggs to hatch? A few weeks, I think. Let's have a look here. There'll be lots of spiders here, I think. Yeah, that's a good place. Mm. Have a look underneath, in these crevices. Hey, look! These two look like they're fighting. Oh, they're little zebra spiders. No, 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 I don't think they're fighting. I think they're gonna mate. Do you see that one? Yeah. Well, that's the male. See what he's doing? Waving his palps and his legs around? That's his courtship dance. But if she might kill him, isn't he afraid? No, I don't think so. It's instinct to mate. If the female sometimes kills the male, it's because she's mistaken him for prey. Oh. Now, can you see the male spider's palps? Remember, they look a little like a kind of boxing glove? That's where he deposits the sperm. Now, see, the female's turned over, and the male puts the sperm into a little pouch that's in her abdomen. Later, because our winters are cold, they'll hibernate, and then in the spring... Eggs! Yes, baby spiders. Anyway, I think we better go now. Can we take these spiders? No, we'll leave them. We won't disturb them. Come on, we'll take home the ones we already have. Hi, Chris. Hi. What are you looking at? Well, Paul said that he saw a cocoon, and he said he thought it was eggs. And we've got one, so I'm just taking a hmm. look. What can you see? It's like a ball of fluff. Hey! Hey, I... Oh, what? I think it's hatching. Look! Oh, you're right. It is some eggs. Oh, that's great. They're tiny, aren't they? Oh, yes, they're so tiny. Little perfect spiders. And the strands of the cocoon, mm, it looks like wire under the microscope. Yeah. Just look at all those babies. Isn't it terrific seeing them hatch? Uh-huh. Maybe it's because it's so warm that they've hatched early. Yeah. Won't Paul be excited to hear about this? Yeah. Oh, look at that little one there. I wonder if Paul's spiders have hatched. Mm, let's go see. Have your spiders hatched? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got lots of them. Yeah, so do we. It was neat watching them hatch. But now we've got so many, my mom says we'll have to start letting them go. I guess we will, too. Time to let them go free. Scattered over Northern Europe, England, and the temperate zones of Asia, are countless quiet streams and ponds. In the shallows of their clear, fresh waters, the currents flow gently and luxuriant plants stretch their leaves and stems towards the surface and the sun. In this habitat lives a very unusual creature that has chosen to live where there is no air, yet it remains air-breathing animal. This is the world of the diving spider. The 
diving spider with the scientific name Argironetta aquatica is the only spider able to live underwater. It can survive here because it carries its own supply of air by forming a bubble over its abdomen where the spider's breathing hole is located. The bubble is held in place by two layers of fine hair. In addition, each of these spiders is able to create small air bells, underwater structures, where they can store needed oxygen. The spiders build their air bells where there is some protection, such as aquatic plants, to hide them from above. The spider first begins to spin a roof-like web. At the back of the spider's abdomen are six spinnerets. Through them, the silken thread is drawn out. Being almost a sedentary creature, its visual powers are not great, and it must rely on a highly developed sense of touch. It lets out a drag line, fastening it to vegetation as it moves. This will serve as a guide back to the air bell. When the roof is complete, the spider goes to the surface to get air. It tests for the surface with its front legs, turns around, and with a quick scissor-like motion, grasps the air and breaks the top surface tension to form a new bubble. The air is then released under the web. It must repeat this maneuver until the air bell is large enough to hold the spider. In the comfort of its new home, the diving spider spends a great deal of time grooming itself. This keeps the spider's body hair free of fungus. Important, since it is the hair which holds the vital air sac to its body. Like other spiders, the diving spider hunts for live food. Aquatic insects are a favorite prey. It can sense nearby prey by vibration on the silken drag lines and must leave the air bell in pursuit of food. Because of poor eyesight, diving spiders usually wait in ambush for prey to come to them. Fortunately, they can go for weeks without food. When prey does finally stumble into its grasp, the spider must carry its victim to the air bell. Spiders can't eat in water. The enzymes which digest the food would be washed away. So it settles down in the bell to devour its prey. Spiders are among the oldest living creatures on Earth. During the process of evolution, 
they were one of the first to leave the water for the land. Only this species has returned and has adapted completely to life underwater. Diving spiders live a solitary life. However, there is occasional aggression when they meet. The nomadic males, unlike other spiders, are larger than the females and hardly ever build their own air bells. Often a male will drive a female out of the bell which she has constructed and take over. During courtship, the male will pursue the female. Often among spiders, the female will kill the male after mating. It is not the case with this species. Nevertheless, he is on guard and keeps his powerful jaws ready to defend himself. Once the female submits to the advances of the male, mating takes place. Now the female creates a special air bell lines it with silk, in which she lays her eggs. All of her energy is now focused on protecting the eggs. Once hatched, the first mission in the life of every spiderling is to get air. Ancient genetic imprints drive them to the surface to collect the vital oxygen. When this has been accomplished, they return to the familiar surroundings of the mother's air bell. But from the moment of emerging, baby spiders are basically independent. They must provide for themselves. In the complicated web of life, in this underwater jungle, are numerous creatures that prey upon the baby spiders. But nature has arranged that many spiderlings will be hatched, so that enough will live to ensure the survival of the species. Now, with her mission in life accomplished, the female faces her greatest natural enemy, fungus. As she grooms, she tries to rid herself of the deadly fungus, which has infested her body hairs. Her vital air sac is shrinking. She can no longer hold air. All of her efforts are futile. Finally, with her air sac gone, the helpless spider has no choice but to climb out of the water to save herself from drowning. With great effort, she moves toward the air and breaks through the surface. Here, she can breathe again. But a diving spider out of water is out of its element. It is not adapted to life here and will not eat. Death is inevitable. Now, at her natural end, she returns to the place where her life began. Nearby, her offspring are busily beginning their new lives. Nature and instinct are guiding them 
to spin their silken threads, to go to the surface for air, to locate food, and avoid enemies. In this never-ending process of life, each new generation must repeat the patterns of the past. Nature has equipped each creature to do so in its own distinctive way. This, then, is the world of the diving spider, unique among the marvels and mysteries of the animal world.